Hey everyone, Andy here from eTechnics and uh, it's that time of the month where we're gonna do a Q&A video. We've actually got, I think, two videos coming up for this. So this is part one. Brandon's here with me as always and we're gonna go through the questions that you guys have set out. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just gotta put it together. It's gonna be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. Okay, so let's get straight into it with, we've actually got three questions that I guess are very similar to do with fake frames. Now. I've had not an argument with Nvidia, but I have made it very clear that a lot of consumers, a lot of viewers, readers, that kind of thing, do see the likes of upscaling as fake frames. So the first question, do you believe the future of GPUs is by utilizing DLSS slash fake frame rate, like what Nvidia is doing now? Which is easier to do compared to the traditional method of releasing a more powerful and efficient GPU each new gen? What do you think about this? Because I know you're quite vocal on the whole like fake frame argument, right? Yeah, well, the thing is, we did get a more powerful GPU with the new generation. Yeah. And it's been that way for however long. Yeah. They are always more powerful, but the thing is, I think people are expecting a bigger jump mm. than can be provided without the upscaling yeah, technology. I, I think like when we do our testing, we obviously test rasterization. We then test ray tracing. We then test ray tracing DLSS. Some titles have ray tracing and DLSS. Some just have DLSS. Some just have ray tracing. So we do kind of, when we do our reviews and our testing, we show, I guess, you know, the broad picture of how it is here, how it is there, how it is there. Now, when we do our overall averages for each kind of, you know, set of benchmarks that we do, that is always just in pure rasterization. We don't show DLSS or ray tracing to a degree in our overall averages, right? There's a B. What's interesting about the wording of the question specifically mm. is DLSS slash fake frames. Yeah. So they're not looking at upscaling as fake frames, just, just frame generation. Yeah, yeah, so DLSS 3 frame generation. I, yeah. I guess they're fine with DLSS in terms of upscaling, but it's more the fake frames, which I know other people have sort of done video content on this and you know, it's not so much of fake frames. It's not like suddenly coming up with these frames that don't exist yeah. wholly. There's, there's a lot more to it, right? Yeah, like you have to use it to understand what it's about. Mm. Like the difference you see with frame generation visually is so much less drastic, if at all noticeable, yep. compared to upscaling. Because yep. upscaling is taking a lower quality thing and making it bigger. Mm. But with the frame generation, it's inserting stuff of the same yep. resolution. So you're not actually really noticing that. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot more to it than just like general frame frame rate. You could say, okay, we're gonna put frame generation on and we get, I don't know, 40 frames per second more in this particular title. But obviously there's more to it as well because there is the whole like latency thing. Yeah. But even that since like the first inception of DLSS3 with frame generation, through driver updates, game optimizations, that has got better. Yeah. So that it is less noticeable now compared to when DLSS 3 first came out, which was obviously the inception of the RTX 4090, 4080. Now we do have it on the lower end, like the 4060 series, which I know consumers haven't, I don't know, had the best reception to in terms of the 4060 and the, more importantly, the 4060 Ti in terms of value for money, but you are able to get, I guess, higher levels of performance by buying a lower end card and then turning frame generation on. And I think that's kind of where this question goes of, you know, but I, I, I see two sides of it. You could buy a 4070 and get frame generation, which takes it up to say closer to 4070 Ti, 4080 levels, yeah. or you could buy something lower and get closer to the levels of that, but then you still have that. So I guess, you know, the best comparison is 
a 40, 60, 40, 60 Ti with frame generation is comparable to, I don't know, whatever AMD is going to release underneath the cards that they currently already have above the 7600 because yep. AMD's frame generation is, well, non-existent at this point in time. Yeah, I suppose you can look at it almost like a way of, you can save some money mm. and get the same performance. You're just sacrificing a little bit of... Yeah. quality and i think there's certain titles as well uh, microsoft flight sim is probably the prime example argument for dlss3 the only way that you're going to get let's call them decent frame rates at decent graphical settings on microsoft flight sim is by using uh, an x3d cpu which kind of alleviates that bottleneck of you know being so cpu intensive but then you can actually get the same gains um, using dlss3 or pairing the two together if you have that amount of money to lay out on a cpu and a gpu yeah it's going to propel you sort of you know double either way you're hardware limited based yeah. on what you buy yeah yeah and i'm not trying to say that you know dlss3 takes away any hardware limitations because it doesn't it, it, there's parts of it which obviously are hardware based through tensor cores but then obviously software and the ai side of things makes up for actually utilizing that hardware to be able to come out with something yeah and so we all know that software is important given the performance increases that people have been reporting with drivers on intel cards yeah i mean intel you know they released their graphics cards the arc series and we're actually working on a feature at the moment that is initial release drivers versus current stable release driver uh, and then i think we're actually going to look at doing the current stable release driver and then how that compares against uh, the beta driver mm. because i mean some of the claims from from intel are ridiculously huge you know 36 percent performance in this and th the funny thing is while the gains do sound good with that there's always the element of well so you're taking it from being bad to okay now as opposed mm. to from okay to like amazing you know you, you can only squeeze so much out of it um, there is like another part to this, uh, so another question. Do you think consumers are right to be annoyed as they are about the state of gaming relying on tech such as DLSS, FSR? Follow up, do you think this allows developers to focus on more important aspects for quicker releases? I mean, I've been pretty vocal about game developers recently and the sorry state of affairs of every game that has basically come out since, probably since Cyberpunk. You know, um, was it Jedi Survivor? Survivor. They even announced that there was going to be a day one patch. It's like, well, just patch it and then release it a day later. Like, it's really infuriating as a gamer that we're getting these half polished products. You know, I'm older than you, and I remember back in the '90s, you'd get a game and it just worked. I mean, it was even the case when I was like a kid. I'd yeah. be playing stuff on like the PlayStation 2, the Wii, the DS. Did you have any problems? No, no, exactly. Which you know we are getting now. So I think there's maybe an element where I think consumers are maybe looking at it like this question sort of trade that our game developers may be putting in less effort because they know ah, it's fine frame generation is going to sort that out and you know because an upscaling is going to make it look a little bit better mm. and, but even in that case i remember when uh, dlss first came to cyberpunk it looked terrible because if you had it on the most extreme dlss setting it went all grainy and horrible so i don't think that argument's really valid do you um I mean, Monster Hunter World had the same thing you mentioned, mm. where if you ran DLSS, because that had DLSS 1, yep. if you ran that, it was awful. It just yep. wasn't worth using. You got, like, no performance benefit, and it just looked bad. Looked bad, yeah. But when it comes to making up for f frame rates mm. using this technology, I'm not sure that I believe it, because unless it's a PC-exclusive title, yep. they are designing these games to go on console alongside these PC releases. And sometimes, as we've seen with The Last of Us and uh, Ratchet and & Clank and things like that, they're actually made for console first mm. and then ported over. And that's where a lot of, a lot sort of more problems arise as well, like we saw with The Last of Us and things like that. So yeah. I don't think there's like any right answer. I don't think developers are being lazy, which I think is what this question was about. I don't think they're being lazy, but there's definitely more they could do. But I think you have to imagine as a developer back in the day, you had to make for, you know, a PlayStation or you had to make for a PC or you had to make for this. Now they're having to make for Xbox, PlayStation, Xbox, Xbox, PlayStation, PlayStation. I mean, GTA, for instance, is on how many platforms now? God, it's... When did it initially come out? 2013? PlayStation 3? Yeah, it was on the 360 for sure. Yeah, 3, 360, 1, One S, One X, and Series S, Series X, PC. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just, you know, it's PlayStation ridiculous. 4, PlayStation 5. So I think, you know, there is an element of laziness to it, for sure. But I don't think that's because of, like, DLSS. I think that's just a completely separate thing. And people are maybe trying to connect dots and just, yeah. 
Yeah, there's coming up with something different. There's been a few more recent releases that are a prime example of why the issue isn't with the technology. Yeah, it's with the game development mm. process. Yeah, because you're getting these rushed out buggy games. Look for Ubisoft, anything made by them. Anything <laughs> rushed out and buggy that people have this huge hype train for. It's like mm. it gets announced. Oh, it's now in development. It's coming out in two years. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I can't wait to play that. Yeah, and then it comes out rushed and buggy. But yep. then you get stuff, look at the new Zelda game, mm. look at, just came out like two days ago as time of filming, is Remnant 2. Yep. These games had time put into them, and they okay. had care put into them, and they perform well. Curveball though, I guess the exception to the rule here is Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk's an interesting one because they had that whole issue with the like bug testing team mm. having lied to them, Yep. which... And then as soon as they started doing that themselves and not outsourcing that, mm. it was very quick that that game got yeah, fixed. It was. So it's... I think, though, from a consumer standpoint, they don't care about bug fixing and who's done what and who's lied about this. They care about... Hold up, you announced it in, what, 2012, 2013? Something like that. And then it came out in, like, 2021. It was 2020, I think. Okay, 2020. So, like, seven, eight years. It's like, well, I don't want your excuses. I just want a game that you spent eight years on to be great. Yeah, but then they took, like, a year, maybe two, mm. and then they took that broken game and went, we fixed it for you. Yeah, yeah, and obviously so, we've got patch 2.0 coming up and uh, DLC as well, right? So, yeah. you know, it is better. And I keep saying, actually, um, sort of off camera, that I do need to re-go through Cyberpunk because I never actually finished it because it was a buggy mess when I when I initially played it. So I feel like I need to go through now, like, fresh set of eyes and, mm. and stuff like that. But I've actually had more fun replaying old games, so I've been playing Portal, Portal 2, uh, I've just started getting into the whole Batman series again. Um, you know, completed all of them. Although I missed a few of like the DLC ones and that I did. Mm. Arkham Asylum, Night and City. Uh, but yeah, you know, great games. They're, they're quite old in the grand scheme of things, but you know, still amazing. Now, sort of carrying on from that, do you think that AMD quietly killed FSR 3.0 after the failure of Nvidia's frame gen? I think that's a harsh one because I wouldn't call it a failure. Yeah, and I also don't think they killed it. Quietly. I think they are going to release that. I just think it's not the they level need that they need it to be. Yeah, yeah. that's. They've looked at what NVIDIA are doing, and NVIDIA are making huge strides with pairing up with game developers to actually not just bring out new games with DLSS3 capabilities, but also adding it to older games as well. Yeah. Uh, which maybe, you know, did have issues and, and stuff, and there, there needed to be that extra performance. So I think there's that. And I think AMD have seen okay, we're a little bit off the mark here, mm. which AMD are always, you know, historically, even up to this point, and I'm not saying it's always going to be the case, but probably is. They are always behind NVIDIA. So Yeah, I think that's because they push CPUs more than GPUs. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They make a much, much bigger sort of piece of the pie from the, the CPU sales than they do from the GPU sales. But what I'm trying to sort of say is that NVIDIA are always slightly ahead, you know, ray tracing performance sort of shows that um, just normal upscaling showed it. They came out first. It is slightly better than what AMD have done. So I think AMD, you know, can afford to be behind because their their cards are priced a little bit better, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Apart from the 7900 XT, which was more expensive, but that's actually come down in price now. But they know that they need to be, say, this close to them and at the moment they're this close to them and that's why you know they announced it i think it was january or yeah i think it was ces was when they said they had like one slide right and it said red frame generation yeah i remember that uh, but they didn't actually talk about it. they kind of glossed over the whole thing and everyone was, oh my god oh my god everyone was talking about something that they didn't even talk about and then radio silence we've mm -hmm. heard nothing at all and that's you know we can only say so much and stuff but i can categorically say to you amd have told us nothing about frame generation all the th I think the only thing that I've actually heard is late this year yeah but I've heard late this year before and then it's meant early next year yeah I mean because they look at it more of like a business year yeah maybe kind of, there's crossover when it comes to actual years either that or they just go ah it's fine people will forgive us we said late this what's the difference between December and March <laughs> yeah I mean I'm a believer that you get the best product by delaying its release. Oh yeah, it, it builds up like hype more and yeah, stuff as well. I think it was Iwata from Nintendo. Mm. He said, a rushed game will always be bad, but a delayed game will eventually be good. Yeah, I kind of get that. I don't like it, but I, kind of, but I do kind of get it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so next one kind of carries on from that because we already spoke about the 4060, but... <laughs> 
<laughs> Why is the Nvidia 40 series so, so horrible? They, they put so in there twice, so they're really not happy. So, so horrible. Um, so they're talking about the 40 series. I mean, that's a pretty broad statement, I would say, or a pretty broad question for the whole range. Yeah. I mean, if you want the best of the best, the 4090 is the best of the best. AMD don't yeah. come close in terms of the whole well-rounded package, in terms of frame generation, performance, everything. 4090 is in a, a whole different world. Yeah, you know? but I suppose the argument is, oh, but it's so expensive. But you could argue about yeah. that. And about you could argue that about anything. Yeah, I guess you know, someone's always going to pay a price for something. So, and some people, you got to remember, in terms of the niche enthusiast DIY market there's always going to be, be like the early adopters and people who want the best of the best and money is really no object. Mm. So they're always going to buy that. Um, my PC at home, I'm still rocking a 3090. Admittedly, I do need to change it because this time of the year, summer, it warms my room up like, yeah. Um, you have, you've got a 4080, right? Yes. And I'm guessing you love it. I do, yes. Yeah. And before you had a... 3070 Ti. Okay. So yeah, it was a nice little upgrade from you. Um, you paid retail for it. Which was, yeah, it was like 1200 Yeah. But you like it. So, and I know many, many people who have 40 series cards and they like them. I know, you know, even Deck, our video guy, is looking at a 4070. Yeah, at he's the looking at 4070. I, I think the 4060 series has kind of put a dampener on the 40 series as a whole. Mm. But I think, you know, once you start segmenting them out and you say 4060 family, let's call it that, which is the 4060, the TI 8 gig and the TI 16 gig. Yeah. That's kind of one separate, let's say, hot mess. 4070, I think that's okay. Not amazing, but okay. It's um, perfectly decent, especially yeah. for like the price at, at the moment. Well, it had a generational uplift. It wasn't fantastic, just like the 4060 series, but it had something. The 4080, I would say, is probably the best one in terms of price what you're getting for your money and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm not saying it's good price per performance, but it's probably the best within the whole stack. So yeah, I, I actually think that question's a little bit unfair in a way, but also if I was Nvidia, I'd be looking and going, well, you know, what have we got to compete with? Yeah. And at the time when they released the 40 series, it was their cells. They yeah. were competing with the 30 series. AMD have obviously come out with 7900 XT, XTX. I like the XTX. Um, I really like that Sapphire Nitro Plus one that you guys have seen. Um, the 7600, could have been a little bit cheaper the fact that they were going to have that as more expensive and then they were like haha no only kidding we we're actually doing it like this it was like that's, that's not funny <laughs> so again there's nothing for nvidia to compete with so what what would you do how do you strive in the market when you go well uh, we, we we beat ourselves yay good for yeah. us because if you push it as far as you can every time it's just going to get harder and harder and harder yeah and then you're going to like corner yourselves out of the market essentially yeah Especially if you have really aggressive pricing, because mm. you're not going to make as much back from that. So yeah, it's, it's this careful balance of what can they push out and how much can they charge for it. Especially when the cost of everything has gone up, like the cost of materials and stuff. So I think everyone forgot when the 40 series came out that you know we were almost about to go through a recession. We have avoided that narrowly in the UK. I know other countries are in the same boat, but... The cost of everything's gone up, you know, cost of food has gone up. I think it's like 12% a year or something like that. So people are a little bit shocked with, oh my God, this more, you know, higher performance product is actually more expensive. How dare they? And it's like, well, the cost of making it has gone up as well. So I'm not saying that Nvidia are, you know, all like transparent and everything. There probably is some profiteering greed in there to a degree, but yeah, I don't think it's as big as what people think it is. That's a company. They need to make money. Yeah. And as I said before, everything is going to be more expensive for the better stuff yeah you could get a 50 pound steak or you could get a thousand pound steak mm. one of those is going to be a better steak you don't but like it steak. costs more no i don't but <laughs> it's an example because people like steak yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's a good example because you is. can get crazy expensive steaks oh yeah wagyu and stuff like mm. kobe beef so yeah so i think you know it's a bit unfair to say the 40 series is so so horrible there are many people who have bought them not as many as who adopted the 30 series but then the 30 series probably didn't have as many people adopt it as the 20 series. Mm. And then the 10, the 10 series was probably the most popular. I mean, Steam Hardware Survey shows that with the 1060s and stuff. So it's a shame that things have moved kind of forward, but also kind of taken a different trajectory as well. But mm. I, I don't think it's fair to say that they're horrible. No. Okay, so moving on from that, how bad is the 4060 Ti 16 gig? Okay, that's a really easy question to answer. Yep. 
I don't know. We don't have one. <laughs> I, so I do know um, to a degree. So within the YouTube space and the media review space, as far as I know, there's only one person who's actually looked at a 4060 Ti and that's Steve at Hardware Unboxed. Shout out to Steve. Um, he actually went out and bought one because he was in the same boat as every other media, which is no AIB nor NVIDIA wanted to sample it, which kind of tells you everything you needed to know about it before it had even been released. Yeah. Um, there is no difference between a 4068 gig and a 16 gig other than double the amount of VRAM. And if I remember rightly, they've actually clamshelled it. So it's got, um, instead of having sort of two there, two there, and then they could have put like more here, more there, they've actually put them on the back of them ones. Okay. So they're kind of stacked in between the PCB, like in the middle. So bit of a weird design, um, probably because of the 128 bit bus and the like low, was it 288 gigabytes per second bandwidth. I'm guessing if they placed the memory anywhere else, they'd have slower latency of access in that memory. Mm. So putting it there, they can use the same traces that connect into the sort of initial eight gig memory. It just does the same there. But um, from the testing I saw on Hardware Unboxed, it actually performs over the same, if not slightly worse in certain things. Mm. And I think the best analogy, and I think I'm actually putting this into a video when I scripted it, um, is like having loads of power in a car and leaving the handbrake on. Yeah. You're like, you, you are throttled. You're not gonna be able to sort of, you know, use that. And that really comes down to, yeah, the bus and, and things like that. Now I know when we initially launched our reviews of the 4060 and the 4060 Ti, we didn't test in Hogwarts Legacy and we didn't test in the Callisto protocol. We've now changed that. We do now test in Hogwarts Legacy because people kind of moaned and asked for it. So we started doing that. But that's where kind of some of the initial problems came out about like VRAM and, and things like that. Mm. Um, we didn't say about it at the time because we didn't know, because we didn't test them games and we'd never yeah. tested them games. So it wasn't us like shilling or, you know, purposely sort of blocking them out. We never tested them before. We never tested them during. Now we do test one of them after. I think, yeah, there's, I just, a hundred dollars <laughs> for eight gig of extra memory, but no extra bandwidth. Yeah. It, it just kind of sucks. Maybe maybe the reason that they're not pushing it to reviewers is because they're not trying to push it for the gaming market necessarily. Maybe it is more of a creator market where that memory can benefit in some way. Maybe, but I mean, we're, we're content creators as well. And for us, VRAM does make a little bit of a difference, but when you're actually rendering something, it's all about CUDA count. And mm. the CUDA core count on the 4060 eight, uh, Ti 8 gig and 16 gig are exactly the same. So you're not gonna get any benefit there at all. And then you are still gonna be bottlenecked by the throughput of what the actual memory bandwidth and the bus allows you to, to do. So yeah, 4060 Ti 16 gig sucks. 4060 Ti 8 gig sucks less, but still sucks. If, if I wanted to buy a 4060 series card, I'd be looking at a 4060 8 gig. Yeah. Yeah, the, the difference between, what is it, a 33% extra cost going up to the TI-8 gig from the 4060, you're only on average going to get like between, so anywhere, depending on the game, 4 to 16% in most games. There's a few outliers, a 30, 40% difference at like 1440p and stuff like that. But if you're gaming at 1080p, for the most part, just get a 4060 and save your money and then buy like an X3D CPU and get the extra games from that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what's interesting about it is the 4060 family is kind of pushing that lower like mm. resolution target yeah and the the beauty like we mentioned earlier you have dlss3 with the 40 series so you could buy a 4060 save the extra money by an x3d cpu enable dlss and get more performance overall for the same amount of money wow but then you've got fake frames <laughs> you have Okay, so next one about sort of GPUs. What do you think what's happening with the overall gaming graphics card market as a whole with pricing going up and Nvidia not listening to their consumers? I think, yeah, um, what was it the 4070 Ti? It was gonna be a 4080. What was that, wasn't it? Um, I don't remember, actually. <laughs> so it's been a while, but yeah, obviously the whole like trying to sell something that's not something that is slightly different and, you know, having a different GPU die and things like that. If it was the same die, like, uh, you know, you do get with certain GPUs and they're like, I think 4070, 4070 Ti is the same GPU core, um, just, you know, slightly different core counts and, and things like that, but it's based on the same die. That's a sort of different story um, because, you know, if it's costing you this much for that card, it's costing you the same for that card. Yeah. Um, and then there's always the argument of like, you know, okay, this particular one didn't quite make it to 4070 Ti level, so we're, we're making it a 4070. 
But so I guess with that argument is maybe it actually cost them more in the first place, but they didn't get the the result that they wanted, so they actually had to lose money on it. So it goes yeah. both ways. So it's a bit of a tricky one. Um, I don't want to sort of you know get into a flaming war of Nvidia bad and. It's funny because everyone always directs it towards NVIDIA and not towards AMD. Yeah, I think I've said the same thing mm. uh, personally outside of any kind of video or anything. Mm. But I, all these people complaining about fake frames, I would like to see them, or I would like to see their thoughts on FSR 3. Are they going to yeah. have the same arguments of its fake frames or are they going to start shilling for that? Yeah, I mean, there's, I guess, the whole talk of, oh, uh, you know, this vocal minority who are talking about fake frames are they actually nvidia users or are they amd users who are just a little bit butthurt and then when fsr 3 comes out are we just going to hear nothing yeah and have they even tried dlss 3 Pro probably not yeah that's what i would say they, they've probably seen videos and the thing is like you can't portray it across in a video because like i mentioned earlier it's not just all about frames it's about latency and, mm. and things like that and you know it, it's like us trying to re record like how speakers sound yeah it's you're limited to what the viewer is listening through yeah yeah if we were to do that we'd be in here going these sound amazing we're reliant on the microphone that's sitting above here which admittedly is a very good microphone mm. but then they could be listening back home on the world's worst headphones and yeah, go, they oh, just, sounds horrible they could be on a train listening through their phone feet phone phone speakers <laughs> spoon speakers. get the words out yeah exactly so you are limited by like the worst thing and i mean that kind of goes back to graphics cards of you're being limited by memory bandwidth and yeah. you know bus and stuff like that so yeah, um, it's a, I don't know, a bit of a tricky one with that, that I guess the overall game and graphics market, it is down at the moment. That is sort of, you know, a, a given, but we are also going through probably some of the toughest times that we've had in decades in mm. terms of cost of living and stuff like that, that people don't have the excess money to just splash out on new graphics cards and things like that. Yeah. Okay, so next one. What's the best budget card for today's market? That's a tricky question. 6700 XT. No, it's 6700. That's where I'm going. Sort of older generation. You've got VRAM. You've got 10 gig of VRAM on that. If you want to go for the XT, you've got 12. And we've got a video coming up comparing it to a 4060 Ti. Yeah. That will be used, most likely. No, no, you can buy them new. $329 at the moment, but they did actually drop down to $320 for the okay. 6700 XT. And then you can pick up the non-XT for like six. Uh, six. 280, I think it is, something like that. So I think there's definitely an argument there. Yes, you are going to lose out on DLSS3, but we've already made that clear. There's a lot of people who hate it. Yeah. Um, but you are going to gain because of the VRAM, the extra memory interface, uh, the bandwidth and things like that. But then also you're going to lose out on ray tracing. So I guess really it comes down to what's more important. I think it's a bit of a kind of open-ended question. Like, yeah. If you're talking budget, you're not looking for ray tracing anyway are you i i don't know i think the word budget has changed so back in the day you would say okay what's the best budget this and budget meant cheapest mm. i mean if you're talking about what's the best cheapest thing i don't know rx 6400 which isn't great um but i think budget has changed the actual meaning of the word has changed ever so slightly so now budget means yeah best value for money mm. which if that is the case i think RX 6700 or even the 6650 XT, which has dropped in price dramatically. But also, there's another element of that question you need to look at, because mm. best value for money depends entirely on what you plan on using it for. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost like, okay, what's the best value for money graphics card if I'm gaming at 4K? It's not a 6650 XT or a 6700 or even a 6700 XT. Yeah. We're talking more. So I feel like we need more information to really dissect that answer, but if you're talking where I think you're talking... I think the assumption would be 1080. Yeah. Presumably then, 60. Yeah, maybe with a little bit of 1440p, like light gaming, then yeah. yeah. I think RX 6700 or even a 6700 XT to a degree. Um, even though the 4060 actually comes in with better value for money than a 6700 XT, it then loses out in certain titles because of the memory issues and stuff like that. So yeah, RX 6700 comes in cheaper than a 4060, comes in better value than a 4060 but a 4060 is a new card you're going to have to pay for the newest technology. It's really that simple. At least you get to utilise it. Mm. Okay, so this kind of carries on from DLSS to a bit, to a sort of degree. What are your thoughts on AI in the PC space? Do you think it's going to help or make things worse in the long run? I feel like we should be playing Terminator music right now. Like, do, 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 do. AI, are we talking <laughs> specifically about... 
they, not that, stealing that, and free Yeah, that, that was the question. I don't know whether they're talking about that or if they're talking about like the likes of you know Chat GPT. Yeah, because if we're talking that specifically, mm. I'd say there is no real space for it in tech hardware. Because mm. what would you use it for? How would we use AI? image generation art programs where so, you give a prompt how would we use that in a productive manner okay so there are some elements to it there's uh, i think it's a service called opus if i remember rightly um basically when we make a, a full we call them like macro video so something like this it goes out on youtube it's in 4k um we then take that video and we make shorts out of it mm. so micro content um so we put it into the sort of right aspect um, ratio for YouTube shorts, uh, TikTok, Facebook reels, that kind of stuff. There's a services, I think it's called Opus, and there are other similar ones where you basically paste in the URL and it makes them for you. Mm. And adds in all the subtitles and cuts it all and stuff like that. It's not great, it still needs a little bit of work. I did try it out, but um, yeah. So there are services like that. Basically means I don't need deck. <laughs> there At is, least for that part of it. There is still that human in, like intervention side of that yeah. where you have to go in yourself and make sure it's right because otherwise yeah. you could end up with the worst content. Yeah, and I mean, chat GPT, I think everyone or a lot of people get it wrong with that where they just kind of, I want you to write me this. And it's like, well, that's... Do my homework. Yeah, it, it's too generic. You need to sort of, you know, I want you to write an essay that is so many words about how the da 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 under the influence of da 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 it should be written in the style of da 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 and you need to give more context to it but obviously it's, it's weird because schools and stuff are frowning on people using AI to like write their essays and stuff yeah because you're not learning no but you still need to put in the input to get the right output so yeah, if you're but... writing something about William Shakespeare you can't just be like write me an essay on William Shakespeare there's no context it needs to be write me something on William Shakespeare um, at the time that he'd just written you know, this play uh, about his upcoming play of, you know, whatever. And you it's, need to, you do need to put stuff in that you already need to know. It's still relatively base level though. And yeah. like, you aren't applying anything you've learned. You're still not mm. learning. You could just say, William Shakespeare, Google a play he wrote, mm. this one. And then you could, it does that for you. And it's yeah. not your own thoughts and opinions on it either. No. It's, kind of what it's found yeah, you, online you, you lose the human element of it because there is you know it is written by a bot so there's no i guess thoughts feelings emotion and stuff like that so like when when i sit down and i write a script i try and add in a few little funny things or even if you write a script that i'm meant to use i then go through and butcher it and make it more andy Mm. because it has to sound like it's coming from me you know i i still have input i don't just go oh cheers for the script let's go film it and then i just read it out there's so much more to that that um yeah i need to put in my own emotion my own feelings and my own thoughts and my andyisms and and stuff like that yeah in that case i'd be playing the role of ai mm. and then you would be the yeah. human element of that yeah. which have to fix what the ai had yeah. presented as a starting point but that could take the same amount of time as just doing it yourself yeah yeah so there, so there is that element of it if we're talking about ai in terms of gaming i think we've kind of touched on most of that anyway in terms of dlss and things like that which i think there is a place for it and it's going to get better i mean in other technologies like cars you know i think it's great because it's going to learn from people who have accidents and you know trying to you know when you've got a car that can auto brake like i have with the cruise control and auto braking it's going to know about like dangers and it can apply the brakes or the accelerator or steer you out the way quicker than you can actually even think about it and then actually do it yeah so yeah so there is that element of it as well um i think it's again too much of a kind of generic question but hopefully i think we've covered sort of all bases with that yeah i, hope, I think we have okay so last one uh because we have got a part two we actually got quite a few questions so we are splitting off this off into another video uh what is the prettiest aib graphics card ever made Yes, I know GPUs are not supercars, but let's pretend they were in terms of aesthetics. Now, if I didn't say AIB... We'd pick the founders. Yeah. I'd pick the founders. I, I think, I, I think I'd think i pick the founders as well. Like, AMD have done a great job with the 7900 XT, XTX, the reference models. They look nice. Yeah. They are starved to a degree in terms of airflow on the back because it's completely sort of, you know, encompassed. But they look good. It's a good step up from the 6000 series, which, again, looked good. When you go back to the old like you know 6950s and 6900 days i mean yeah they just look like a big block of plastic with a big blower fan and they were awful 
but Nvidia did very much the same until they went up to like the 10 series, you know, it was okay. 20 series was a lot better. 30 series was even better. The founders, 40 series are just, you know, a work of art. It's gorgeous. I, I've said in many videos, and I've said to you as well, you know, if Apple were, desi were to design a graphics card, I'm pretty sure that would be it. In terms of mm. not just the design, but how it comes apart. It's not, it's not not easy, but it's not hard. It's kind of, you know. It would be more silver though. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, yeah, I think with that, you know, the screws are hidden. It's a ribbon cable for the fans. Like That's very Apple, isn't it? Yeah. Which I guess you could say NVIDIA are the Apple of the PC hardware world. You could, I suppose you could say like, that. Of the yeah. gaming part, yeah. Because we do know Macs are an option. Who buys a Mac, but yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm a kid. Um, I don't. AIB, I'm going to say it's this. Just yeah. because it's so unique. I, I couldn't help but notice you pulled that out. <laughs> I didn't know what this question was going to be. Yeah, I mean, I brought it out before the Q&A had even started. Um, this is actually the 4060 iGame Ultra WOC from Colorful. And it's just, it's different. Mm. You know, I, I've always liked white GPUs and this is white, apart from obviously the kind of, and you can see it on the camera, the sort of, you know, changing color from bluey green to purple and stuff, which I like. But, you know, the rest of it is white. It's got some sort of outlandish graphics. It's got pink on here. It's just a nice, cl it's clean, but it, there's a lot going on at the same time, yeah. which I think's quite a nice balance. I think this would make a really nice themed build. Like cyberpunk sort of style. Yeah, like some kind of, I don't know, maybe even like, I'm not into anime show, but or? like it is, it does give Evangelion vibes to yeah. a degree. Yeah, which I know Azusa have obviously done there. Oh, they've got loads of stuff with that. Problem with that I think red more though. Yeah, they're so expensive as well because of obviously the collaborations that they're doing. It's the same with, you know, their IKEA furniture. You yeah. Buy the IKEA version for 399 or you can buy the Azusa version for like 1299. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. you saw, I saw in the news this morning, I think it was a 4070 version of this. Okay. Where, I'm going to turn it for the people to see, where I believe the idea is the back panel will come off mm -hmm. and then the power connector is in here, hidden. Uh, okay, yeah. So the cable will just come out the back. Yeah, so they're, hidden away. I guess they're trying to do with the whole like monkey ape stuff and the, the motherboards with the hidden connectors. Mm. This is just kind of the next logical step to it. I think, you know, once um, NVMe drives become higher capacity, lower prices and things like that as well, they're going to be like the new thing and then we're not going to have any SATA drives. So then less cables again. I mean, yeah, it seems like the logical way to go. The only problem I have with all the like hiding of cables and things like that is every build is going to look the same. We had this conversation on another Q&A because yeah. our basically our thoughts were, it's a really nice idea for a clean look, yeah. but they're all going to look the same. Cables and custom cables in particular yeah. are a huge aspect of mm. theming. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I know there's a problem with this card in the fact that, you know, it's got that sort of bluey, greeny, purple shininess, and then it's pink. I know not everyone's going to be into the pink, but I, I think it kind of works and I think it would go quite well with most things anyway. If you made sure your build like matched the aesthetics mm. and style of this, yep. you could have a really good looking PC. Mm. Yeah, I think you'd have to know that you wanted to buy this first mm. and then build the rest of the system around this as opposed to, okay, I'm going with this color scheme and then you go, oh, I really like that graphics card, but now it doesn't go. You'd have to know that you wanted this in the first place. So yeah, this is a 4060. Um, I believe there are other SKUs, you know, of this design and everything. So I, I would personally say that, although I do like the palette kaleidoscope, full on crazy RGB -ness. Oh, the Game Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's definitely a Marmite type product. And I think I, I think I actually said that in the initial review when we did the video on that, but not everyone's going to like it, but the people who are are going to, you know, Love it. Yeah, I mean the silver thirty series one, I kind of hate. And the forty the, series is more, yeah, it's midnight, black, isn't it? Yeah, the black it. midnight kaleidoscope they call it. So yeah, it's that's kind a of lot nicer. Where you've got the crystals and then sort of behind that, it's got like a yeah a black to it. So so yeah, um, that pretty much wraps up this Q and A. We have got another video um, Q and A as well, so a part two. I don't think there's going to be a part three, but we'll see how we go. Um, lots of other different questions and stuff. As always, if you want to get your questions in, you can put them down below in this video, or you can head on over to our Discord server. Link is down below. And in there, we've actually got an Ask e Technics channel. So yeah, you can just chuck everything into there. And then you never know, your question might be featured in next month's video. 
so yeah like i say we've got a part two so make sure you're subscribed and check that out that will probably be going live a day after this video so uh definitely uh, keep your eye out on that and uh yeah we've got a patreon live stream to do next as well so uh if you're not already a, a patreon definitely sign up link for that is down below you get exclusive access to behind the scenes content super special wear on our discord um discounts off merch all kinds of weird and wonderful stuff but it's all really really good stuff and it helps support us like you wouldn't believe so there we have it uh that about wraps it up thanks for tuning in and uh i'll see you in the next one see you later guys bye bye